everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Let's Play series. As always, a huge thank you for all of your beautiful support in the last episode in the form of the like ratings and especially in the form of the responses to the topic that we discussed at the end of last episode. I really do appreciate it, my friends. I've had a lot to think about from your guys' responses and probably the biggest takeaway that I had was that I need to be making more progress in episodes. Maybe not necessarily do episodes as often, but try to cram a little bit more progress in the episodes if possible. So I must admit, we're not going to do too much of that in this Let's Play going forward. However, I am going to take it very much on board with the next series that I do in the new era that will begin on this channel when 1.80 comes out at the end of this year. When I say a new era, guys, I really do mean it. There's going to be some huge changes to the way I do content here and mostly in the form of what you guys were saying in the comments area, trying to cram a little bit more progress into my episode. Well, more to the point, a lot more progress into my episodes. So yeah, truly guys, thank you so much for all of your kind, supportive and constructive words. I really do appreciate it. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I will admit it's going to be a little bit more of an odd jobs episode. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that I want to get done. I'd love to get the little aquarium done for this sort of plinth here. I'd also like to get the entrance done for the mega sugarcane jewel layered farm here. That'd be a fantastic thing to get done. I've already even got an idea as to what I'm going to do here. We're going to do a little bit of pixel art. We're going to make a firework rocket just on this little face here. So I'll tell you what, let's actually begin with that. So somewhere around, I should have myself a hell bunch of gravel. There was a little bit in that chest, but there should be some more. Yep, there we are. So, the red, of course, will come from the poppies from right over here. And the white, of course, comes from the bones here. For any of you who don't have time to make a TNT concrete exploder, just put the concrete powder on your off hand. And then just sort of place the block up against the edge of a water body. Yeah, easy as pie. But, uh, yeah, making a TNT concrete exploder would definitely probably give you more stuff uh, in the finish. All right, all right. Let's make ourselves some pixel art, shall we? So we're going to have ourselves some red concrete rather like this. And then we do some of this and then we do a little bit of this going up again. And then we do a little bit of that. And then maybe we could have the little red top, I guess. I mean, seems like a pretty good way to go. All right. So that's just sort of a rough thing. Let's have a look at it. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. All right, well, that's looking kind of decent, huh? Oh yeah. Firework rocket pixel art. Ha <laughs> ha. I told you we could make it work, huh? Yeah. Love to see it, guys. You love to see it. All right, cool. So now we need to actually sort of decorate the main entrance itself because it still looks a little bit flat. So let's go ahead and get this done. I mean, to be honest with you guys, even something as simple as this would do the job quite nicely, in my opinion. So yeah, we've got the nice little pixel art. We've got the sugar cane out the front here. And also in here is a little bit of decoration just to really emphasize the fact that, you know, it is a sugar cane farm. The firework rocket is merely there to say, oh, hey, you can make firework rockets out of these materials, eh? <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear. All right, well, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty happy in calling that done, although I will go ahead and replace that stair block with that. That uh, was kind of annoying me a little bit, actually. Uh, wait, does that mean I need to do it over here as well? Yeah, I do. All right, let's do that. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Now it looks like the pixel art is, like, proper sort of poking out the wall, huh? Yeah. Okay, cool. I like it. We've got to do some other stuff around there to sort of tie up the area. Like, we've got this little area here that we haven't really done much with. And to be honest, I'm kind of just tempted to, I don't know, maybe grow a tree or two. Uh, maybe just bone meal the ground. And I feel like that'd be enough to make this place feel a little bit more complete, I guess. And it's just out of the way, in my opinion, so it doesn't get in the way of the view of the Pythian. So I think I'd be pretty okay with doing this. You want to know a top tip that I learned from Wattles lately? There is a way where you can force grow the uh, tall oak trees. And it's actually very, very simple. All you gotta do is make a little bit of a ring up here, like this. Ah, oh, done it. Uh, like this. There we are. You dig out the corners. Uh, you keep that little stalk there, and then you just go ham. Wait, hang on a minute. I think I did this wrong. I think it actually needs to be a block lower. Yeah! 
Yeah! Tall oak tree! There we are! The method worked. Fantastic! You just gotta make sure that you have a, 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 a substantial amount of bone meal, otherwise... You know, you might just not get the tree that you're looking for. Let's get ourselves another oak tree. So place down the sapling. You gotta make a ring around it, dig out the corners, and then go to town with the bone meal. So again, I'll show you guys how to do it. Here we are, do a little bit of that. And then you whip out the bone meal, and you go to freaking town. Oh, look at that. A tall oak tree. Fantastic! So, just like that, ladies and gentlemen, a few lampposts here, a couple of large oak trees there, some bone meal on the ground there as well, and we've got ourselves a nicely complete looking area. Yeah! So we pop over here. Ooh, snap! Oh, this is looking kind of cool. I guess the only thing, I guess, is the fact that uh, I can't really see the firework rocket pixel art from, like, down here. The trees are kind of in the way, uh, what about if I was like to come back here? Eh, uh, yeah, the trees are kind of in the way for being able to see the pixel art, but I guess when you're looking at it dead on, you can see it pretty well, huh? All right, guys, so with that area done, it's now time to work on the plinth aquarium. Oh, yeah. Also, am I the only one who is noticing this? What is wrong with your tail there, buddy? Oh, hey, buddy, why don't you go ahead and die there, bud? There you go. I wonder if it was the skeleton that was causing his tail to do that, because as soon as I killed the skelly, the tail has stopped. Uh, okay. Da -da 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 -da! Give me emeralds! Yes, yes, give to me all of it, and then I'm gonna go buy glass, because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered to go ahead and dig up any sand. Give me! Yeah! The lazy... Slash, smart way of getting glass. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, guys. Time to get this thing underway. I'm pretty excited, actually. So you remember how I said I'm too lazy to dig up a bunch of sand? Uh, well, actually, I'm gonna kind of have to do that because I don't really want this to be a dirt aquarium. I want it to be a nice proper aquarium full of coral blocks and all that kind of good stuff guys it's gonna be lovely i'm so looking forward to it so let's go ahead and add in a little bit of a rim here there we go do a little bit of that all right uh do we want to do one for the top as well i feel like that'd be kind of a nice idea no i hate you i hate you i hate you i Look at the Pythian roof. It's starting to go green. Ooh. I like it. Got a nice weathering effect going on here. Ah, oh, you could tell when we did the most recent bit of the roof, huh? <laughs> this is kind of cool, though. So the first step, of course, is to go ahead and start filling this up with sand. I'm kind of thinking we do two or three layers of flat sand, and then we sort of make a nice natural-looking back wall to this so there's like different layers of sand that eventually form a wall at the back i think that could be a pretty cool idea in terms of having this be a nicely sized aquarium there we are so something like this is what we're going for a nice sort of natural looking aquarium type area unfortunately of course we can't replace the stone here because that is the actual platform where we're walking on above the plinth uh but there is a couple bits of dirt here which we could go ahead and do with getting rid of. Here we are. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it well, guys. Uh, not really entirely sure what we could do with this. I mean, that is the pathway at the end of the day. I think we've got no choice but to leave it there. But yeah, guys, you get the general idea of what I'm going for here, right? Obviously, eventually, this is going to be completely flooded. We'll have sea pickles for lighting in here. I think it will be absolutely fantastic. And for those of you guys who can't remember, I have an aquatic box full of coral blocks that we got a fair while back. So yeah, this place is gonna look banging. All right, so with all of the sand placed in now, it's time to floodify this place. We're doing it layer by layer at a time so that all of this becomes you know stationary water source blocks and by doing that we can go ahead and use soul sand for decoration and you know make ourselves some little bubble elevators for any of the little critters inside it to sort of bob up and down and have the time of their lives you know what i'm saying <laughs> Oh, snappers. All right, guys, we're getting real close to having this thing fully floodified. I think there's just one more source that needs to be put in this corner. 
And there we have it, ladies and gents. <laughs> the beginnings of an aquarium of epicness. Ah, yeah, the time has come. So here is our aquatic box. This is what we've got going on so far. We have all of the varieties of the coral blocks. We've got all of the varieties of coral fans and the coral themselves. We've got kelp and sea pickles as well. So I guess the time has come. Let's just make a start. Let's just freaking randomly place in a whole bunch of these here coral blocks. We're just going to like go through them in a cycle, I guess. Yellow, pink, red, blue, purple, yellow, pink. Alrighty, coral place down. Let's see if we can do this. I'm pretty sure if you plant sea pickles on coral, yeah, they are technically renewable. All right, can I make it renewable if I do that? No. Okay, so they have to be placed on coral, and then you can make them a renewable resource, which is actually something that is very, very good. Here we are. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, oh, pickles everywhere. Love it. <laughs> and just like that, we have a super lit up aquarium. Fantastic. All right, so what's next on the docket, huh? Maybe we go ahead and get ourselves a bunch of coral fans and coral plants placed down. And then maybe we sort of bone meal the sand a little bit, right? Yeah. All right, well, let's grab all these things out and let's start going to town once again. So, yeah. Oh, dude, this is going to look so freaking amazing and colorful and fantastic once it's all done. All righty, guys, just a few more things to add to the aquarium now. We could go ahead and add in some uh, soul sand for a little bit of animation in the form of bubbles. Yeah. Gotta love them bubbles, though. All right, so we'll get these placed in. Oh, wait, that's not right. We want to get these placed in randomly just across the floor here. I just messed up, apparently. Uh, let's do a little bit of that. We'll have maybe one at the front here. Ah, my Insta mine. It's too strong. <laughs> yeah, look at that. All right, so we've got ourselves a bunch of bubbles. Let's get ourselves some kelp. We could just place some little bits in on the floor here. And then, of course, over time, it will grow and it will look mighty fine, my friends. All right, so there we are. A little bit there. Do one on the back here. Maybe some round the back here. Maybe one there. All right, so that's all of that place down. So all that's left to do, ladies and gentlemen, well, two things. Boat me on the ground, get ourselves some seagrass going, and then place down these two fellas. I mean, these two have been stuck in the aquatic box for a very long time. So it's about freaking time they came out to play, eh? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. This is looking marvelous. All right, fishy. Go, go, go. It's a black and white stripey one and another black and white stripey one. All right, I think we need to go on a little bit of a fish recruitment drive. That's right. You heard that right. A fish recruitment drive. We're going to need like a commercial and everything. Are you a fish looking for some new prime real estate? An area where the existing residents are happier than ever? Well, why don't you make yourselves at home at the new Plinth Aquarium? All you need to do is allow me to pick you up in a bucket and then you could be transported to your new haven. Your experience may vary. Python accepts no responsibility for loss of life by axolotl or from other sources. Bucket is sterilized and COVID safe. Oh no, you don't, sir. Not for a second time. Hey, some willing volunteers. Hello there, sirs. Yoink. Hello. Come on, come on, come on. Come see your new home. Ah, oh, got some interesting looking fellas here. Oh, is that a blue and black one? Uh, yes. Yoink and yoink. Here you go. Enjoy. Enjoy. Even got some box standard cod in there because why not? Whoa. It almost looks like Dory from Finding Nemo. Hey, Dory. Oh, dude, I've got to pick up Dory. <laughs> I can't not, dude. <laughs> hey, fellas, enjoy your new residency. Yes, go on, Dory. Enjoy your new home there. All right, so the count is currently 10 fish inside of our new plinth aquarium. And i tell you something. I feel like that's a pretty good number to go with. I don't want to overload the entity count around here, guys. Remember, we've got enough entities around here with axolotls, now these guys, and all of the item frames as well. <laughs> we have too many more. Our world is going to start lagging. Eh, since we're doing all this fish-related stuff... Oh. Um, someone going to tell me why a random horse is in the water? Huh. The horse thinks he's an axolotl. All right, you're our honorary axolotl for the day there, bud. The only thing is, he's never ever going to be able to get out of this pond. 
Hi, fellas! Anyway, yeah, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by the discovery of this horse. Guys, we need to do some more water-related stuff. So let's get you and you. I don't know who I just bred up, but uh, we'll go with it. All right, come on. Which baby are we going to get? Oh, it's a little white one. And it's a brown one. All right, cool. Come on, i got to yoink you. Get yoinked. Ah, there we go. Got him. So there we are, my friends. The Plinth Aquarium and the Sugarcane Farm Entrance are both up and running and looking mighty marvelous, if I do say so myself. Uh, since we're doing sort of exterior features here, I honestly feel like we should get the outside infrastructure of the Pythium properly finished because it definitely isn't finished. One of the things I'd like to do is maybe make the sort of front triangle ceiling like flat at the bottom and then we could have like a micro pixel art sort of up there potentially and then of course we need to just sort of add more details to the sort of inside building on the exterior itself right we'll start off with the triangle roof here yo check it out dudes oh it's looking pretty good isn't it i'm pretty chuffed that we did this actually so we've got end rods for a little bit of lighting we got like a little globe type thing up there it's kind of difficult to make a globe that's only like four by four big so I try my best. It's probably not the best looking thing I've ever done, but I mean, it kind of looks like a world or the earth or something, right? Oh, no, man. The fact is, I'm pretty darn chuffed with this, man. I think it's looking mighty fine, and I'm pretty darn happy with it. And it's nighttime as well, so we can really see the nicely illuminated Pythian here now. Oh, that's so cool. All right, so that's that bit done. Now, ow, son of a gun. Oh, God, the invasion begins. Anyway, guys, we need to start adding some details to the inner building itself. The unfortunate thing is, in order to add some details to this, we're going to need to clear out this front porch area. Oh, how many more project chests am I going to be moving around the world before I actually get a storage system up and running, huh? <laughs> Oh, man, this is getting out of hand. We've got a project area over here. We've got a project area over here. And now we've got a freaking ginormous one just over here. But the good news is it's a little bit more organized this time. So, yeah. In fact, a lot of this could have just been in single chests. Well, anyways, we're just about ready to get ourselves started with detailing this place a little bit more. We just want to add a little bit of detail, a little bit of depth to this entire thing. Maybe we add some, like, corner pillars to this thing. That could probably be a good start. Maybe mix in some alternate blocks. Maybe some cracked variants of these here bricks. We've basically got a world of possibilities here, guys. So, let's go ahead and see what we can do here. And I will be back with you guys in a bit. Alright, guys. So, check it out behind me. I've made a little bit of progress on the entrance. And indeed, the entire infrastructure of the Pythian. And I'll tell you something. It is looking way, way better. Oh, hang on a minute. I've just noticed a couple of discrepancies. Look at that. We can still see a little bit of copper right there. So one of the things I did do was actually cover up the copper on the underneath because I felt like it made the build look a little bit untidy. But, of course, it is still on the roof here. We just can't see it from underneath anymore. I just thought it looked a little bit untidy, a little bit weird from underneath being able to see it. But as you guys can see, this place is looking miles better now. I think it's looking miles, miles better. I really, really do. So, yeah, we've still got some things to do there. You can see we've got some uh, cracked bricks and cracked tiles here, which is very, very nice. We've got a lot of lava going on here because it's a great light source and, in my opinion, goes really, really well with the grayness of the deep slate. So, I'm pretty chuffed about how this is looking. Uh, but we've got, like, a very, very large area up here to do something with and I was very, very simply thinking of using a bunch of iron bars. We just make like a giant lock through window with iron bars. I just figured why not? It could be a nice idea. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. A ginormous iron bar window. I mean, it's a pretty basic thing to do, really. Just punch a hole in, put some iron bars inside the space, and then just add a little bit of a rim to the outdoor. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool, actually. 
Yeah, that's really, really good. I actually really like that. <laughs> We've got plenty to do on the interior here, by the way. The Pythian is by no means anywhere near finished. I mean, yeah, we've got sort of the build sort of mostly done, but there's a lot of detailing work and various other bits of bobs that need to be done as well, including, of course, mapping out these areas, getting them all done. That's going to be probably the tallest task, really. But, uh, yeah, guys, let's go outside, have a look at what we've got going on now. Yeah! Oh, dude, that's looking so much better, though, isn't it? Let's go up here, see if we can't get ourselves a better vantage point. Yeah! I'm loving it. I really, really am. Question, do we want to keep these little dirt grassy piles? Is that really something that we want to keep? Because, I don't know, if I'm being honest. Maybe what we do is we grab out some bone meal and just, I don't know, add a little bit of grass to the tops of this. And then that might just make it look a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of grass added makes it look a little bit more weathered, a little bit more aged. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that one. All right, guys. Well, that is indeed going to wrap it up for today's episode. We made some pretty significant progress on the Pythian here, on the outdoors here anyway. I'll tell you something. It is looking way, way more polished now, isn't it, guys? We've got the aquarium on the plinth underneath. It's looking mighty fine. I'm feeling pretty good about the underside here and the lava and the giant punched out hole with the iron bars. Guys, I do have a question for you guys, though. Uh, this stone platform platform here. Do we want to keep it stone or do we want to replace this platform with something else? Guys, leave your suggestions in the comments area below. But yeah, I don't know. Looking at it from the underside, eh, the stone doesn't really look that great. If we look at it from up here, eh, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. I feel like there's some other material that would make that platform look way better though, guys. I really do. So, leave your suggestions. For now though, of course, we're going to do the comment of the day. Tycho123 says, hey Python, are you going to upgrade this world to 1.18 snapshots when they come out? Simple answer, no. <laughs> I have been burnt massively once in the past with that, in that uh, with the 1.17 snapshots when we did have the new cave generation and then they decided, oh hey, we're not going to have the new cave generation in 1.17, it kind of messed up one of my previous Let's Plays. The previous Let's Play in which is actually unlisted on this channel, so you won't be able to find it really, but yeah, it was a Let's Play that lasted 20 episodes, it was essentially Python's World 2, and yeah, unfortunately, that series came to a rather abrupt close because I got burnt with the snapshots. But I tell you what, my friends, it just goes to show that snapshots are experimental, okay? This is the mindset you need to have if you are going to play snapshots in your worlds that you care about. You know, what if something happens? What if there's a massive change that really messes things up? In the case of Python's World 2, that old Let's Play, yeah, I got burnt. So, yeah. I don't think I'm going to do that again, guys. We're sticking with 1.17 until 1.18 comes and the new era begins on this channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, I would very much appreciate it. If you haven't already, if you guys would head down below the video and drop me a like. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.